In this video, I'm gonna walk you through a simple way to build worship sets that will keep your congregation engaged every week. Hey, my name is Brian Bolivar and I am the worship leader at Rock Harbor Church. Over the past 12 years or so, I've been leading worship at churches that are big and all the way down to small groups and youth group. But one thing I've noticed is that the way I design worship sets is basically using the same process that I'm gonna share with you in this video. So I'm gonna walk through the six step process to help you write the best worship sets that will keep your congregation singing week after week. And if you'd like access to coaching or courses for your worship ministry, head over to www.churchfront.com to apply for a free strategy call today. So let's dive in. Okay, so the first step of the process is I like to build worship sets from one anchor song. So basically what an anchor song is, is that one song that kind of is the foundation for it all. So. How do you get to the anchor song? Well, I am glad that you asked. So for me, the anchor song could be defined in a few ways, but one would be like a winner, like one that just, song that just really, every time you do it on Sunday, it just really lifts the congregation. They love it. It could be a new song, you know, something that you've been really looking forward to, or, you know, it could be an original song if you're a worship songwriter like I am. Or it might be like a time of year, it might be Easter or Christmas where you want to bring in a particular song. So that anchor song is kind of the foundation for the whole thing. And honestly, the way I look at it is once you get that together, then you kind of build the entire set around that one anchor song. Okay, so the second thing is once you've had that anchor song in place, then you literally build everything around it. And not just the content itself, but even things down to like, complimentary keys and all that stuff. So complimentary keys, I think is a big one, especially when it comes to just smooth transitions. We'll get to transitions in a bit, but we're not ready to transition yet. So when I mean, when I say complimentary keys, if you don't know what that is, do a quick search on that and you'll find tons of great videos and content about that. But for an example, if I'm gonna do a song in the key of A, but for all of us worship leaders, that means capo two, key of G, you know what I'm talking about. So if my anchor song is in the key of A, then the song before it is either gonna be in the key of D or the key of E, that way I can quickly get there smoothly. So in musical theory terms, if my key is in the key of A, that is the one chord, so then I'm gonna either go to the four chord, which in the key of A is D, or the five chord is the key of E. So once we have our complementary keys in place, then it's important to consider your team. And the literal keys of the singers that you have in your band is so important because if the song is too high, obviously, it may be difficult for the singers to hit those notes. And if it's too low, it might be difficult. Well, it could be difficult to hit the notes, but also it might not communicate the correct energy that you're trying to get across. So once we've got our main keys in place, then considering the keys of your actual team, I think is very important. And with that, as we select the correct keys for the singers, it really helps free them up because if the vocalist is worried about hitting a particular note, whether too low or too high, guess what they're not focusing on? They're not focusing on leading worship because ultimately we're doing all this stuff and we're putting all of this technical and practical stuff into practice so that we can lead without any in interference or without any kind of getting caught up in the technical side because we do all that beforehand. That's why we spend the time to prepare these set lists with all these things in mind. And that way we can kind of, when it comes down to actually doing the thing on a Sunday, we're not worried about any of the technical stuff and we can just lead our congregation well. And with that, the main reason we're doing all this, especially when we consider the members on our team, is that we don't want them to be distracted. We don't want them to be worried about, man, am I gonna be able to hit that note? Is that gonna be too high or too low? Because ultimately, we do all this practical and technical stuff ahead of time, so that when it comes to do the thing on Sundays, we don't have to worry about that side of it and we can just lead people well. And with that, when it comes to the feel of the song itself, we wanna kind of get songs that kind of feel right together. So if we do a big song in 6-8 that has a lot of swung feel and a lot of pushes in it, but then we go to a very straight song right after that, sure, it might be great and we might be able to deal with transitions, but it also could feel jarring to the congregation. And they may not be able to communicate like, oh, I don't know what that is, but ultimately it's pulling them out of that moment. So even when it comes down to deciding what songs are going to go after each other and before each other, you know, kind of get it in the same pocket feel-wise, or at least ones that complement each other along the way. And number three is use descending BPM. So as the first song is probably gonna be the most hype and up song, and then as we move through the set to have it kind of slow down. Now, of course, this is there's always exceptions to this, but I think that starting off high and moving down slowly will move from praise to worship. And if you don't know what the BPMs of songs are, you can go to multitracks.com, just go to search there and search any song in any arrangement. And at the very top, it shows you the keys, 
time signature and the BPM. And so as we start in the more praise, high energy stuff, then we move into the more worship stuff, you know, just kind of doing these little things, especially if you're running clicks and tracks, if you have a song that's faster than the song before it, it might actually, it has the potential to throw the band off because it might feel a lot faster than it actually is because it's a quicker tempo. So just keep that in mind as you're designing these sets. Number four is song transitions. Now this, I think that transitioning between songs is almost as important as the songs themselves because the way that I always approach building set list is it's kind of one movement. It's not just like, okay, this song I love, then this song, this song. It's sort of like this whole, you know, typically on a Sunday morning, it's 15, 18 minutes of musical worship at the top of services. So for me, I'm trying to create that as one kind of emotional movement through the entire process. So the kind of questions you might ask yourself is, do I want to say a prayer at, between the second and third song? Do I want to tie the first and second song together with, with a very tight transition? And you know, you might need to do some kind of a teaching. It might be a song where you want to explain what that bridge is going to mean to kind of get your congregation engaged and kind of understand what's coming. So you don't necessarily need to script this out unless you want to, but I would say taking the time to prepare for the what happens between songs is very important and it's no different than the song itself because if the song is a tool ultimately to point to God for people to worship him, then as we are in this role of worship leadership, we need to lead the congregation and sometimes that happens just as much in between songs as it does in the songs themselves. And number five, we want to honor our congregation. What do I mean by that? Well, you know, we all as worship leaders and worship team members, we are probably the most engaged in the worship culture. And what I mean by that is, you know, worship music. We, we all know the latest Elevation song. We all know the latest Bethel song, but the congregation may not listen to that music at all. So when it comes to actually picking the types of arrangements that we do, I think keeping in mind our congregation itself is very important because yes, the 15 minute song that kind of ebbs and flows and goes up and down, we love that for ourselves and maybe for our own personal worship time. But thinking about the congregation is critical because when we come to play these songs and lead these songs, you know, we don't want to leave our congregation being confused. Like, what is happening? I, I, don't, I don't understand. Now, now I, what I will say is, I know for me personally, it's always my goal to lead people into deeper waters as we continue to, on our own personal walk and journeys, go into deeper waters ourselves. We want to take the congregation that ride. However, they may not be as ready for that as we are to go. So taking it slow, being patient, and you know, using songs that, that might be challenging to the congregation, sure, but maybe we do a different arrangement where we don't do that extended bridge or that extended intro. Like a fun example is we do that song Praise by Elevation, which is like the song of the church right now. But here at Rock Harbor, I just feel like doing that, we let everything that has breath praise the Lord part, doesn't necessarily fit the culture of the church here right now. So I just cut that part of the track and we roll from there. So it's kind of being sensitive to those things, again, always being for leading and pushing our congregation to deeper waters as we go, but also honoring them along the way. And number six is spiritual preparation. Now I intentionally put this last, even though it honestly comes first, but I wanted to kind of go through some of the practical steps before we got into the spiritual parts. Because, you know, ultimately, as we take the platform, we can't take people where we haven't gone ourselves. We all know that. But when it comes to even things like anchor songs, like I know for me personally, I often will have feel God lead me into those anchor songs that we talked about at point number one in my times of devotional. When I'm out there in the morning going through my Bible uh, and doing my own personal prep preparation in worship. So as leaders, we can't neglect that. I, I recently actually saw a video on YouTube that was really inspiring and honestly convicting. And basically what he was saying was that we're not to lead from a place of lack from the, from the platform. We're to lead from a place of overflow. And that, especially as, as we're in church ministry, we know that there's a lot that goes into that. There's a lot of drain. It could be difficult. It could be so tough at times. But the only thing we can do on a consistent basis is make sure that we hit our devos and our spiritual preparation and our time with the Lord, because that is the place where he can speak to us directly. Hopefully we can do it early in the morning or late at night where the distractions aren't there as much, and we can actually hear his voice before we head into each day. So as far as the context of worship leading, I just think that's probably one of the most critical things we can do as far as our own preparation. And just like I mentioned before, when our team is prepared, you can eliminate those distractions. I know for me personally, I try to run through the set for the week almost every day. And that might seem like overkill for somebody, but 
I think, for one, as we practice the worship set, we're literally worshiping the Lord. So when we do that in our own private time, there's no doubt that he won't show up. And there's a lot of times for me, like I like to do, you know, spontaneous tags or something that might pop out, but that actually happens a lot when I'm playing by myself in my own preparation time, because God is speaking in those moments. I always say this to the team too, before we're practicing, you know, whether it's a Thursday night rehearsal where there's no congregation or it's a full house on a Sunday morning or for by ourselves, it's all worship. So it doesn't matter, you know, what people are around us, as long as we are seeking the Lord with our heart and our song, he will show up. So that's why I can't emphasize enough the importance of our own personal preparation time. So now we're gonna build a set for March 24th, 2024. So that is actually Palm Sunday. And I know that I have actually a song. It's actually an original song that I was talking to my pastor about and we're gonna use it. So in this case, that's gonna be my anchor song. Now, because I wrote the song and produced the song, I know that it is in the key of A and it's at 70 BPM. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. And also I, I say this, pardon my Zoom, I'm visually impaired, so I use a lot of assistive technology. So you're gonna see some wild zooming. So hold on tight because it's about to get a little bumpy. So here comes, first thing I'm gonna do is add New Covenant here on Planning Center, which is your friend and mine. So the song is called New Covenant. So I'm gonna put that in here, got it. Okay, so now we're at the bottom, so I will drag these up at the end. So now that I've got my anchor song, I'm gonna build around it. So key of A, so now I'm thinking, okay, what do I have in the key of D, and what do I have in the key of E? And also, 70 is pretty slow, although in today's standard, 70 is like mid-tempo, even though we all know it's slow. So I'm gonna think, okay, first song, what's a good first song in the key of A? First thing that comes to mind is House of the Lord. I know it's a song that works here a lot, and it's, it's a great opener. So let's go ahead and choose that. So We'll do House of the Lord by your friend and mine, Phil Wickham and team. So let's search house here. So we got that rolling. Key selection, I know it's in B flat originally, but we only sing that when we're feeling really, really spicy. So we're gonna go with A, so it's in complimentary keys. Drop that in. Okay, so now I've got New Covenant and I've got House of the Lord. So I'm thinking 70 is pretty slow. And also I know that it's Palm Sunday. And also I know my team, I have a really awesome female vocalist. So I'm gonna say, if I'm gonna sing those two, maybe I'll have a female lead on another one. So I'm thinking it's also gonna be Communion Sunday. So there's a lot going on, but these are the kind of things that we consider in our set lists because we wanna make sure that we're honoring the congregation. We're also honoring just the service of the day. So a great song that we do for communion a lot is Come to the Altar. So I know that in a female key, that's probably gonna be in the key of E, which is a complementary key of A. So that just so happens to work. So let's go ahead and grab that. There we go, key of E, it's in our system. So now we're gonna drop this in as well. So now we're in. So now I'm gonna drag these up because this is the first, this is the worship set. So I'm gonna grab this because I want this one first. House of the Lord is first in the worship block. And there we go, House of the Lord, New Covenant. So I'm choosing to put the second song the original song in the, in the middle section, because I know it's the same, I think that O Come to the Altar is also in the same key. So in this particular case, we have two of the same, they're both in six eight, but because it's a new song for the church, I want, some, I want a little extra space to be able to talk into that and speak into that. So that transition from song one to two, I'm gonna kind of go into the song, the, the meaning behind the song and why we're singing it, which it happens to be a communion song also. So that'll set up perfectly to go into O Come to the Altar, which will be the final song of the worship set. So that's gonna be our worship set here at Rock Harbor for uh, March 24th. But as you can see, kind of going through those thought processes, and I know that some of this stuff is just me doing this for a long time and, and just kind of naturally doing that. But I feel like these six steps were definitely a part of each step of this process and coming to this set that I know that this church will really enjoy this whole thing because we kind of start off quick celebratory, move into kind of a big sounding, you know, song about communion. And then we go into oh, Come to the Altar, which is more of the praise, also kind of giving homage to the communion story and all that stuff. So that's what brought me to uh, writing this set for the 24th of March. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Head over to churchfront.com for more resources for your worship and production ministry. I'll see you on the next video.